Okay, let's do a practice problem together. Um, so we got uh, Macala is a board game for two players. A board game has uh, 12 small pits called houses and two large pits called stores. I've played this game before, didn't know any of these terms. Um, at, this, at the beginning, the same number of seeds for little marbles are placed in each house. All the stores are empty on either end. Okay. Each player controls six houses. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Um, and and her store is to the right of the house. Yeah, you're trying to get little seeds into that side, and that guy is trying to get into this side. Okay. So we got a Java class called Mancala. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in this question, you are asked to write the constructor. Okay. The board is represented as an interarray with 14 elements. So instead of a 2D array, we're dealing with maybe 0 through 14 or 0 through 13. Um, okay. Uh, first house are represented by. Uh, okay. With 1 to 6, our store has the index of 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is zero. Oh, that's not the simplest. Okay. That's confusing. Uh, so that little bit right there is funny. Throughout your solution, use the three symbolic constants to find above rather than literal constants to make it change the board size if necessary. All right, so instead of using board size of 14, we'll just use board size so it's more dynamic. These are good practices um, to get used to. and so that way you can change your constant in one place and the rest of the game can adapt really easily. Okay, so uh, the construct write a constructor for the Mancala class that has that takes one integer parameter n and initialize the board placing n seeds in each house and leaving the stores empty. Complete the blow. Okay. Okay, so they start the header for the constructor for us. So let's uh, give that a try. Um, public um, Mancala int n. There we go. And I see in the details that they have the int board here. The whole point of a constructor is to set up variables, especially the variables that are defined here but not yet initialized. So that's what an, an initialization should do, is initialize these variables. So let's define this, and this board, I don't need to typecast it, it's already defined. Um, actually, it's not defined in my class up here, so actually, let me, uh, let me translate some of these variables. Okay, I have set up the instance variables so that I won't get so many uh, errors while I'm building this uh, code. All right, so now the constructor here is a, is a part of the class Mancala. Constructor needs to have the same name. It cannot have a return type, so it cannot return void. It cannot return an int. The constructor is just the constructor. Um, okay, and uh, my constants here are in all caps. The class names are in uh, are in a single cap. Uh, and the variables are all lowercase. These are standard naming conventions that you should know. So now, uh, since I don't need to typecast um, this variable, it's already defined as an integer array, um, I can now um, set up the new int, and instead of saying 14, which would be the board size, I'm just going to use the board size variable, so that way it is a little bit more flexible. So now I have that created. Um, now what I'll need to do is this variable n, is that the total number of seeds that I'm placing or the seeds that I'm placing in every uh, house? I think that's what the, they're called, house. Um, so let me, let me just double check this. Uh, Initializes the board to hold board size values, places n seeds into each house. Okay, so we're looking just for a standard loop to go through all of this integer and initialize each with 
that value of n. So let me see here. Um, so this is just going to be a, a loop, and I wouldn't want to do a for each loop um, because uh, I want to test the, the counter will be easier because then I can skip sort of uh, these uh, easier if I'm doing a standard for loop. So I'll do for, um, hold on, for and k equals zero, k is done, and k just counter um, size. So as long as I'm smaller than the board size, k plus plus, okay, everything makes sense here. And now, now all I really need to do is just board k is equal to n. Yeah, I mean, I'll just do it like that, because once I'm out of this, then I'll, uh, yeah, once I'm out of this, then I'll just do board store 1 is equal to 0, and then board store 2 is equal to 0. A lot easier, because I was thinking of just having if statements, if it's that, then, you know, uh, for everything else, use n, except for this and that, but then I would leave them as null instead of zero um, if I just skipped store one and store two index in setting this up. It's easier just to loop through everything, knock it all out to n, and then just reset the stores at the end of that. Um, probably the easiest thing. And that sets up the constructor. I think that's your whole part A right there. Right? Let me just check this. Yeah, I mean, that's the, these comments, really, a lot of the question, I mean, you can almost skip, this is right here, usually the most helpful bit of detail for me, um, the Java doc comment, um, okay, um, that should do that for part A, let's move on to part B, on each move, a player takes all of the seeds from one, actually, you know what, you know what, I'm just gonna pause and read this, without wasting your time. Uh, you should just pause as well and, and read it uh, yourself. Done. So if you've never played this before, you're going to empty this uh, this house. You're going to put one seed there, one seed there, one in there because you scoring a point. One there, one there, one there. You won't put in any into the enemy store. Um, so it and it looks like this to there. Okay, easy. And now you're just taking the um, the number that you are working towards. So I mean the uh, the current index of the store. So again, this is the most helpful thing right here. Okay, again the method header is set up for us, um, but it should be pretty easy anyway. It's a public uh, method, so it can be used. Um, it's up from the outside. It returns a boolean. It returns true or false, or whether or not the player gets to go again. Um, so boolean move int k, and here we are. We've got it set up. All right. First things first. Okay, so the first thing I need to figure out, I created a variable for my store and one for the opponent's store. I need to figure out, just from the position that's been selected, I should be able to figure out um, which is which. So, uh, if we look at the map, this is 1, 2, 6, this is 7, so it's the halfway mark. So if I'm and this is zero. So if I'm under the halfway mark, it's player one. If I'm over the halfway mark, it's player two. So, cool, that makes sense. So all I need to do is test if I'm under the halfway mark. So, um, the halfway mark is already in this variable here. So I can just say if k the index of where what I want to move. If k is less than store one, um, then my store is equal to store one. 
and opponents store. I can spell is equal to store two. Okay. Um, yeah, that should be that. Um, and then I guess the if that's not the case, then make it the opposite. My store is equal to store two. And uh, opponent's store is equal to store one. Okay. That should fix that. All right. So next, I need to figure out how many seeds I have in my current spot. So uh, in K. So if I'm uh, selecting this guy, I need to figure out how many seeds I'll be going through. So let's go back to the code. Let's see here. So int seeds is equal to board at spot K. So now I know how many I'm dealing with. All right. Cool. And now if I'm, I'm just trying to think through the steps of the uh, game here. The first thing, I'm just trying to translate the actual actions into one step at a time on code. So I figure out I orientate myself to the map, um, and then I count how many that I have, basically by picking them up. And by picking them up, I empty the the cell here. So the next thing I'll want to do is empty the cell, and that is board k. Now that I have it copied to a variable, I can just set it to zero, because now that spot has been emptied out. And now I'll distribute seeds as I go so while and I'll keep on going as long as I have seeds so as long as it's greater than zero I'll keep going and you see how sloppy I'm being sometimes I'm starting my brackets underneath sometimes I'm starting it right after uh, that's not cool um, I need to get a little bit more consistent it just makes it more readable if you always uh, follow along the same pattern, um, but I'm wasting time explaining that. Okay, so first thing I need to do is if I just emptied the th the my current cell or my current house, uh, the next thing I do is go to the next one. So I'm gonna in I'm gonna increase the counter right away because I've just drained K. Now let's move on to the next one, and so I need to check. If let's see here, I would do trying to make sure that I'm not going over the board. I I don't want to crash the game. Um, so before I try to access any, uh, before I try to do any board K, and I've just increased K, and I don't want an index out of bounds error. So right away, if I'm dealing with an array, I'll check to see if I'm going over the board size. So if I'm over the board size, so if it's 14 or it, even if it equals 14, because on a four, uh, because of zero indexing, size a 14 array only goes up from zero to 13 and not 14. So if it includes the that, I'll just set this back to zero. So because it uh, the way it works at spot 13, then it goes to zero. So and then one, two, three. So uh, so if it's over we go back to zero. So that's a quick little fail safe that'll take care of that right away. Um, and and you'll definitely get questions like this with arrays. Now the only exception I will I'll give a seed to every house with the only exception of my opponent's store. So because that's the only exception I'll test for that exception right away. So as long as the house does not equal my opponent's store Increase that by one, give it one seed, and then take one from my seeds. And then it'll loop back up and go to the next one, make sure that I'm not going over, and uh, again, distribute the seeds. And then once it's over, once this uh, while loop uh, is done, I'll just test, am I currently at my store? Did I finish the round at my store? If that's the true, Return true and I get another turn, because um, this will evaluate to a true or false. So that's my answer. I think that'll. I think. I think that works.